So thank you for the invitation. So I'm based in the Center for Cardiovascular Science and my interest really is in immunology adipose, and its interaction with adipose tissue and metabolism. Um, so I first got interested in uh, adipose tissue when I was working with Rory Kamano as a postdoc in Birmingham on the development of lymph node in the mouse embryo. And here you can see this lymph node in, in the embryo surrounded by um, differentiating adipose tissue. And what we uh, showed at the time is that adipose tissue was providing stroma for the lymph node during its, its development. And um, what we realized as well is that adipose tissue was also supporting the development of other lymphoid structure. Uh, in the visceral adipose tissue. So the visceral adipose tissue, you find some in the pleural cavity, so small, uh, they are quite small, the mediastinal and the pericardial adipose tissue. And the peritoneal cavity, you will have the diomantum that contains a lot of uh, milky spots, a lot of lymphoid clusters. Um, so here you see the, the number of lymphoid clusters is, is the highest. Um, in the peritoneal cavity, you have the mesenterium, and in this mesenterium, you find an intermediate number of clusters. And then you have very big fat uh, adipose tissue, for example, the gonadal adipose tissue, and those um, fat tissue are very, very few lymphoid clusters, so close to zero. So the best way to uh, find those lymphoid clusters is to do hormone staining. So if you put an antibody against CD45, you will see eliminating those uh, lymphoid clusters here in green. Um, so, we, so in this talk, I will, I will talk, to, talk about the factor that controls the formation of fikes, so the fat associated lymphoid cluster during peritoneal inflammation, and in the second part, I will talk about uh, the pleural fikes and how they support production of IgM during a filial infection. And this work has been doing in tight collaboration with Lucy June and Judy Allen. So those uh, fat associated lymphoid cluster, they start to form after birth. Uh, so three weeks of age in the mice, and their number gradu gradually increase um, in, in the mice as they, as they age, and it reaches a plateau later on. So they are very highly vascularized. So here you can see the, the blood vasculature in, in red, and um, they are mostly composed of B cells. And you, so those B cells are marked here with IgM, and you can see they are very, very bright for IgM. And in fact, they, re they, they are mostly B1 cells, so the B cells you find in the uh, peritoneal and pleural cavity that produce natural uh, antibodies are very important uh, early on during uh, infections. So what we notice that when you induce uh, peritonitis in a mice by injection of zymosin, uh, you drive an expansion of the lymphoid cluster. So before you could not really see them, uh, but then after uh, three days after inflammation, you see they're, they're nearly visible by the naked eye. And the second thing we, we saw is that you induce formation of new clusters, so there is no formation of lymphoid cluster. Their expansion is due both to the recruitment of B cells as well as an important recruitment of um, yellowed cells that you can see stained in blue with C11B. So we wanted to know what was, uh, what was the factor driving this expansion of cluster. So we checked for the lymphotoxin beta receptor, that is really important for payer patch lymph node development, as well as a TNF receptor. Uh, so lymphotoxin beta receptor was not involved, but TNF receptor are. As you can see here in this double knockout, you cannot induce formation of more cluster. And uh, we wanted to know what cells were important for the production of TNF alpha. So in collaboration with Sergei Nedosposov, we uh, screened knockout mice, conditional knockout mice for TNF alpha. It was lacking in T cells, B cells, or myeloid cells. And you see that it's the myeloid cells that are important for the production of TNF alpha and to drive formation of more of those lymphoid clusters. Um, the other thing we, we found was that rag mice, when, even though there are few, few, fewer clusters, they were not able, able to form a more cluster upon inflammation. And it was not because they were lacking B cells, but because they were lacking a subset of T cells that called invariant in KT cells. So those invariant NKT cells, they recognize a glycolipid that is presented on the CD1D. So it's why they are absent in CD1D knockout mice. And they are particularly enriched in adipose tissue. And you can see here, uh, so they are 0.1% of all lymphocytes in mesentric lymph node, 0.3% in the spleen, but they are nearly 6% of all lymphocytes in the visceral adipose tissue. 
And um, so there have been uh, really a lot of paper, um, from several paper in the, in the last couple of years, showing that those uh, INKT cells they play a role in adipose tissue in controlling, uh, helping control metabolism during obesity and reactivating those uh, cells where where inducing weight loss and uh, amelioration of. Uh, glucose metabolism. So it's one of the things I'm, I'm looking at at the moment is if there is a link between their capacity to induce a lymphoid cluster and their capacity to regulate metabolism in adipose tissue. So those are in KTC, they could secrete very rapidly um, high amount of IL-4 and IL-13. And uh, we wanted to know if those cytokines were involved in the formation of the clusters. So we looked at IL-4 receptor alpha knockout mice, and in those mice you cannot form more cluster open inflammation. However, IL-4 and IL-30 seems to be compensating for each other in the, biopsy, in the biopsy background. So this indicated that the TH2 arm of the immune system was involved in the formation of those clusters. So thus, we had this idea to look in a model of uh, parasite infection to see if they were, how they, they, was, they were involved and if parasitic infection were inducing cl cluster formation. So I can go very rapidly about, on this one because uh, Judy introduced already the, the model of filaria infection we've been using. So the, the, fila, the, the, the worms get into uh, the lungs through the lymphatic and then come into the pleural space. And then the larvae finish its maturation and, and produce a microfilaria that will then uh, reinfect, um, go into the, the mite and reinfect the mice. And so we've looked at the two fat depots I was talking you about at the beginning, so the pericardium and the mediastinum, and look at the immune response in these two, two, two fat depots, as well as in the uh, pleural lavage. So the, it was very, really, um, the response of um, the adipose tissue to the parasitic infection was very striking. You could see here the, all those clusters become uh, really, really big. Uh, you have induction of cluster formation very early on during the infection, even before you can see um, the, the parasite into the, the pleural space. Um, and uh, what, uh, what, what the other interesting thing is that this response was really localized to the pleural space, and you could not see induction of cluster formation in the peritoneal cavity, so in the fat in the peritoneal cavity. So we had a localized uh, response. Um, so what, what was happening for the B cells found in those, uh, in those clusters? So here, B220 will mark one subset of B cells, and IgM will mark another subset of B cells. And uh, you can see uh, K67 is, uh, will mark cells that are proliferating. So you see the burst in proliferation in those clusters that explain how, why they are expanding. And um, the other thing you can see is that there are many B cells that start to accumulate IgM into their cytoplasm. So they are differentiating into plasma cells. And we could confirm that with a staining for CD138 that stain for uh, plasma cells, and you see all those green cells that are plasma cells uh, producing uh, IgM. Um, so we, you can see that uh, by FANX, uh, all B cells compartments are represented, so the classical B2 cells, the B1A and B1B cells, and their number is multiplied by 10 at the 11 after infection. And this is true in the fang, so in the cluster, but also in the lavage. But we could not detect this expansion of B cells at this stage in the lymph node. Um, so by staining for K67, so here you see naive mice, so very few proliferation. But then at day 11, you see that in the FALC there are a lot of cells that um, express high level of K67. And, uh, so, and that are proliferating, and you see here the level in the lavage is, is lower for K67, indicating that maybe cells start to proliferate into the fungus and then exit into um, the, 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 the cavity. And here it's just a quantification of that where you see cells, uh, the number of cells uh, proliferating. So those cells are producing IgM. So IgM is very important early on for, to provide protection during infection. So it's been shown for viral, bacterial, or even parasite infection. It's been shown to be important for cell-mediated killing of related filaria. And um, the, the thing that's um, interesting about IgM is that they're very, very big, and they cannot diffuse in the tissue. So to be effective, they need to be produced in the right compartment. And the hypothesis we wanted uh, to test is that do, do those uh, IgM are really produced only in the pleural space? And uh, so we compared the, the level of IgM we, we saw in the pleural space, peritoneal space, and in the, in the blood, in the serum. 
And indeed, we could see that production, induction of production of IgM to total IgM here was only induced in the plural lavage. And this was very, uh, very, um, very striking for little, uh, the little specific antigen um, I, um, antibodies. So you see here, only in the pro lavage, you see induction of the production of those, uh, those antibodies. So we wanted to know then if the funks, if really it was the B cells in the funk that were important and not the, the B cells into the, the lavage, or if, if there was a difference. So we compared B cells uh, from lymph nodes, um, pericardium, pro lavage, peritoneal lavage, and see which one were the one that producing uh, uh, antibody against uh, little. And uh, indeed, um, only the cells from the funk were able to produce those IgM, showing that uh, the funks were supporting the, um, the, the proliferation and the production of IgM by, um, um, uh, against, uh, against little. Um, so we, there is a, so this um, strain of mice, the biopsy, the biopsy mice, they are susceptible to little, and we wanted to know if, what was the response in those mice. So what we could see is that uh, this time there was no induction of cluster formation in biopsy mice. And this was correlated with uh, a smaller induction of, the, uh, a smaller increase in the cell number in the, in the, in the falc of those, of those mice. So in the black six you have this uh, exponential exp um, ex expansion of, of, of cells in the falc, and here you have a sm small increase and then it's going down. And uh, we could not find any plasma cells in the biopsy mice. And here you see a very, very small induction of a little specific uh, antigen, uh, antibodies in, in the biopsy mice. So in fact, now we've got this model. So upon little infection, the files uh, increase in size to support a pro proliferation of B cells, secretion of antibodies. And uh, now what we would like to know is whether IF4 receptor alpha, TNF receptor, or NKT cells are involved in the expansion of FALC and proliferation of those cells and secretion of antibodies. Um, so B macrophages don't proliferate in the peritoneal cavity at the same time in the IF4 receptor alpha dependent manner. So what we would like to know is whether the production of those IgM are important to mediate uh, macrophage, the worm killing by macrophages, maybe through FC receptor engagement, complement, and so on. So I would like to thank um, so my, my, my ex lab, so in Birmingham, so in Camano, collaborator in Cambridge, so Andrew McKenzie, and in Berlin, Sergei Nedov Spodov, and in Dayton Bro, so Lucy John and Drew Jill Dialen, who so, yeah, we are very excited about this story and um, as a member of the lab. And Lucy has a poster number 40 if you have any more uh, questions and want to see that. <laughs>